Chris, and this is Disney Updates. Margie's running a little bit late. She'll be in here in just a minute. And uh, say to hello to everybody. I, the only person in the chat right now is M Mike. Hey, Mike, from Crazy Mike's Fun Channel. Uh, but let's go. Yeah, I want to do something just really quick before we get started. So uh, we got a lot of Disney news to cover. Not a lot. We got some. We got some interesting stuff to cover. So, hey, Sandy. I just try and do something just real quick before we get started. So, but Margie will be in here. So she decided that, oops. Did not mean for that to pop up. There we go. All right. Let's see. All right, so here we go. Get ready. Let's do some Disney news. So here we go. Starting off with from insider.com. It says, my twin sister and I dressed the same for an entire week at Disney World. People start stared at us and infantilized us more. I don't know what that means. Infantin infantin is that like I don't know. So all right. So let's see. My twin sister and I visited Disney World often. We decided to wear the same outfit to see how people would react. I was surprised that guests stared at us more while cast members told us how adorable we looked. Get the inside scoop on today's biggest story in business from I don't know. That, I don't think it has anything to do with the story we're reading. Although my twin sister and I shared a special relationship and do most things together as roommates and best friends, the one thing we rarely do is dress alike. Our parents, parents frequently dressed us alike growing up, especially on special occasions. I don't remember how people reacted to our matching outfits, but I remember constantly being stared at and spoken to by strangers who were in awe of what they saw. Dressing alike was not something I specifically took a liking to or continued to do in adulthood. Hey, Mary. Uh, however, once we moved to Orlando together, I became curious to see how people would react to us wearing the same outfit, especially at Walt Disney World. We decided to wear matching dresses to Walt Disney World for a week and take note of how people looked at us, treated us, and spoke to us to see if it was out of the ordinary or drastically different from what the typical experience when we visited the parks together dressed differently. Let's see, the characters had a different element to uh, to use as an interaction starter. When we meet characters at Walt Disney World together, many of our interactions are usually focused on our colorful hair. However, when we dress alike, the interactions were centered on our matching outfits. Many characters would see our outfits and comment, are you best friends and you never dress al you never dress alike or something to that effect. Although I like it when the focus of our character interaction is on our colorful hair, the matching outfit made for different storylines, which I thought was a lot of fun. We were stared at by guests more often. My sister and I are usually stared at when in the parks together as we're two 24-year-old girls who usually wear bright outfits and have colorful hair. However, the increase, the increase in the number of stares by people was significant and noticeable when we dressed alike. I noticed that most people would stare for a couple of seconds and then garner the attention of their friend or family members who would then stare too. I have developed that I have developed a thick skin as I have become used to people regularly staring at me, but that is not to say it still doesn't sometimes make me feel uncomfortable, especially when the stares come from older guests, which they often were. Many cast members went out of their way to tell us how adorable they thought we looked. Cast members at Disney World are usually super kind and accommodating. When we visit the parks, but I noticed this treatment even more when we were dressed alike. Many cast members would go out of their way to tell us 
how much they liked our outfit and to tell us how great we looked. Cast members are already busy enough doing their job and dealing with guest problems, so the fact that they took the time to recognize our effort and compliment us meant a great deal to me. So the interaction with the Space Mountain cast members who was checking our lap bar before the ride started particularly stood out to me. She was so overjoyed when she saw our outfits and screamed, I love your outfit so much. Your dresses are so cute. I was not expecting this at all, and it made my experience on the attraction that I am already a big fan of even better one. So people infant infantilize us more, especially older guests. I don't know. I guess treat like ch children, I'm going to say. Despite the fact that I am a young adult with a lot to learn, it doesn't always feel the best when older people treat me like a baby, okay? Although this sometimes happens to people at the park, I can usually tell that it is well-intended and they just want to make sure I am not in any distress. When we dressed alike, people would say things like, do you need some help? When looking at the Disney transport bus sign and aren't you two just the most ador adorable girls? Although these comments seem friendly on the surface, the tone with which they were spoken was often condescending. <laughs> All right. So. So I, I've i known some twins. Uh, actually, right now I work with twins. Uh, they're not identical. So they're paternal. So, but I have known one set of, one set of identical twins and they dress alike too. Of course, they were in the military with me, so they had to dress alike. So that might have been the thing. <laughs> they actually dressed just like me. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, let's see. got, hey, Chris, Sandy. So, uh, what would Donald Duck listen to? To his music on a duct tape. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the next, next piece of. All right. I wish Margie was in here for this one because I think she'd really like this one. So this is coming from Diz Dining. Free dining, free resort stay, or free Disney World annual passes. Which would you pick? Chris, where is Margie? Did she run off to Disney with? No, she she's here. She's just busy doing something else. She said she'd be back in here in just a minute. So here we go. Once again, free dining, free resort state, or free Disney annual passes. Which would you pick? So I guess when they say free dining, do they mean forever? Or a free resort stay? Does that mean I get to stay at the resort forever? Free forever because it seems like you get an annual pass that's for an entire year if you did said free dining for a year that would match or free resort stay for a year that would match the annual pass if it's not that way then i would probably go for the annual pass that seems like that would be the better better one so let's go ahead and read this it says disney world is a premier tourist location right in the middle of central florida Consisting of four main theme parks, thousand resort rooms, and plenty of entertainment. Some saved their entire lives just to experience the most magical place on Earth once. That seems excessive, but as the cost of a Disney vacation goes up, many have to put their ears away for a few more years just to be able to go. Others find workarounds to save a few dollars here and there by staying off property or bringing their own food into the park. Unless money is no object, we've all probably had to adapt our Disney vacation a bit to keep them affordable. As for, as the old adage goes, nothing's nothing worth doing is free. So it says, although Walt Disney World is constantly running promotions to save a few dollars here and there, the average cost for a family of four to stay at a Disney-owned resort complete with park tickets is anywhere between 4000 and 6000 This does not include transportation, spending money, or dining. It also assumes that you're staying at a value-style resort. Disney World is tough on the old wallet, and as we can often expect price hikes each, 
it isn't going to get cheaper anytime soon. Like the rest of the country, despite popular opinion, Disney World Resort is impacted heavily by inflation, driving the cost of Disney Resort hotels, theme park tickets, transportation, and food through the roof. Fast passes are only sometimes free now, as guests to Disney World Resort must buy Genie Plus and individual Lightning Lanes to get their money's worth. The only thing free you'll find at Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Disney Springs, Hollywood Studios, or Animal Kingdom is a small cup of ice water on a height on a on a hot day. So, all right. As the prices go up and planning becomes more complex, it got us thinking: if we could save a few bucks on one free expense at Disney World, what would it be? Everyone is always looking for a way to find free things, right? I mean, there's a solid chance that if you found this article through a search engine, you were looking for free Disney stuff. Honestly, we don't blame you. While Disney World has gotten remarkably expensive, pricing out of many families that used to attend yearly. No one would blame you for trying to find ways to skimp and save on your next Magic Kingdom day. Most of us can only afford to drink around the world showcase once, much less stay at a deluxe resort like the Grand Floridian. You've got to find what budget works for you, but for the sake of this article, which is to have an imaginary fun, if you could only use one of the following options as a Disney freebie for the rest of your days, which would it be? Oh, for the rest of your days. All right. So the first one would be Free Walt Disney World annual passes. So no more buying theme pick park tickets to the Animal Kingdom, Epcot, Magic Kingdom, or Hollywood Studios. Instead, enjoy the park at your leisure with little worry about doing everything in one trip. When you're done, done park hopping, head over to Disney Springs and enjoy amazing discounts at, Walt, at World of Disney. Get access to exclusive events and merchandise. Annual pass holders are Disney royalty. At least they feel that way. You'll find their precious AP magnets peppered on car bumpers throughout Walt Disney World Resort parking lots. You'll catch them casually hopping on the monorail or Disney Skyliner while you're frantically finding crowds of other regular guests just to catch a tram. They no longer have to worry about park hoppers or park reservations after 2 p.m. They can just show up. Better yet, they pay one lump sum and no longer have to worry about buying theme park tickets. Isn't that the sweet life? Hi, Kevin. Hi, Mary. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Mike. So, um, who else is in here? Uh, I think it's it. No, I thought it said Sandy, maybe. No, oh, Sandy is in Hi, here. Sandy. Yeah, I'm sorry. So... If you're a diehard Disney World fan, this is probably a no-brainer. Ditching the regular tickets and getting free annual passes for the rest of your life is probably a super easy decision, considering the increasing cost of park tickets. An annual pass is already enticing other offer for many. Getting one for free means potentially saving equal to thousands of dollars. In addition, you can save even more money using your AP discount on specific merchandise and dining. Having a free annual pass, visiting Magic Kingdom to catch fireworks whenever you want, or visiting any other Disney park at your discretion is a dream come true for many. However, if saving money is your goal and deciding which option is best, you would want to use your annual pass often as that's the only way it is fiscally responsible for when purchasing it outright. Unlike most pass holders, many of our readers don't have immediate access to Disney World Resort, therefore... They may come out better financially by picking another option for free stuff at Disney World. I'm good, Kevin. How are you? So, the next free option. Free dining and snacks at, at Disney World. Picking free annual passes to Walt Disney World might be the obvious choice for those looking for free stuff. However, if you are not aren't going to be visiting multiple times a week, there may be a better option. Another huge experience expense at Disney World is food. Even a quick service meal for a family of four at places like Casey's Corner or Flame Tree Bar Barbecue can quickly add up to well over $100. When you start adding on snacks, table service meals, character dining, and drinks throughout the day, you're looking at hundreds of dollars a day just to eat. For comparison, 
purposes. Myself, my wife, and two of our kids caught would cost around $600 for park hopper tickets for one day at Magic Kingdom. If we ate every meal in the park, including daily drinks and snacks, the one table service meal a day, we'd be looking at around 750 on food, water, and snacks. Of course, this is an extreme example, including a character dining meal, but the point remains the same. Eating exclusively in the park is an ex incredible experience. I'm good, Miss Mary. How are you today? What, what is this about? Sorry. I came in at the wrong time, I guess. Asking if you had a choice of three different options, which is free, free annual passes, mm -hmm. free dining, or free resort stay. Hmm. Which would you pick? So we're, we're only on the second one. So many guests to Walt Disney World find themselves confined to budgeting regarding food and dining. They may want to go try Tiffin's at Animal Kingdom when really they can only afford Columbia Harbor House at Magic Kingdom. Having all of your food and drinks for free at Disney World would open a lot of doors for some who typically wouldn't be able to enjoy more expensive sections like Victoria and Albert's or Nar Narcoosie's. What if we up the ante? What if you no longer needed dining reservations? Instead of vying for that highly sought after Cinderella Royal Table reservation, you could just walk up, be seated, and enjoy a free meal. So I don't know. See, see, I thought in the beginning that the better option was going to be the free annual pass. Now, this isn't this is for your the rest of your life, mm. is what these are. So Mike but, says we've been using the Fetch app. When we reach 63,000 points, we get a $50 Visa gift card. And we get the points for scanning receipts. So we put the $50 towards Disney to help pay it off. Oh, wow. That's Good awesome. Idea. Yeah. So, uh, so we are to our last option. The last option is free resort room stays for life. So much like dining, lodging on Disney property is high cost. In fact, it is probably the most expensive part of a Disney vacation. Rooms can range from a couple hundred dollars a night to thousands, depending on the room type and resort you choose. For this reason, many give up on their dreams of staying at Fort Wilderness or Animal King Kingdom Lodge and settle for all-star music or even stay off property somewhere. However, with one simple choice, those same guests could stay at any and all resort rooms of their choice, choosing indefinitely. Suites at the Grand Floridian, bungalows at the Polynesian Resort, or the Treehouse Villas at Disney Saratoga Springs Resort are all on the table. We'll even make it more interesting and throw in the Royal Suite located inside Cinderella's Castle and Magic Kingdom. If that isn't enough to make you second guess those free annual passes, I don't know what it is. So it says, oh. as lodging continues to be a large barrier for many visiting Walt Disney World, there are certainly a few here who would select this option as their lifetime Disney World freebie. Personally, it would be on my preferred list. Don't get me wrong. I'd still spend the savings on things I don't need in the park, but I'd feel better about it knowing I had a nice room at Disney's Beach Club with my name on it every night. So there you have it. You can only pick one. So what's it going to be? Free annual passes, free resort stays, or free dining? Each option has its pros and cons. But for me, I think as I'm already an annual pass holder who visits the park a lot, I definitely take the free resort stays. The Polynesian would become my new home. What, uh, what about you? What other factors would play a role in helping decide with your free perks you'd, you'd select? I already know what one I would select. Which one? Free resort stay. Really? I still yeah. I, I I still have to go with the annual passes. I wouldn't. Because I would say if I if I seen our ever seen us living in Florida, I could see having where there could be times I just do a quick run to the park, do something I wanted to do, does, and then leave. Okay, so before I make my decision though, yeah. does the free um, so does the resort stay? You can stay whenever, however many days you want. Mm -hmm. There you have it. If that's for life, I already have a place to live. Who needs a home in Florida if you're going to be staying there for the rest of your life? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Margie. Ding, ding, ding. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. 
Hey, Hi, Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia. So I don't know, Cynthia. We just read. What? Which would you pick? Would you pick annual passes for life? Would you pick free Disney dining for life? Or would you pick pick free Disney resort stays for life? So everybody in the chat, like, tell me what, what your choice would be. I'm curious. Mine's restore, resort stay. All right, yeah, Margie, I chose that. You chose the annual pass? Yes. Chris says annual pass. Mary, with your catch, do you have the auto scoop litter pan when the... Kenny mom says resorts. Resorts. Litter pan when the cat uses the pan activates the sweep stuff into the chamber built in the... Go driving for a week and a maid. Oh, it's for life. You can stay there every day. Yeah. Like, we could... It's re it's, it's free resort. resort. It's free resort stays for for life. Oh, I'd stay there every day. All right. All right. I guess Sandy's the only one going to answer. All right. Well. No. Sandy answered too. Or Sandy. Oh, Sandy said yeah. resort too. Yeah. Yes. I am so good with the resort stay. Oh, so even better. Yes, so even yes. better. <laughs> Going to have a party at the resort with me, Sandy, and Cynthia. <laughs> All right, moving on. What the heck oh, is this? Oh, goodness gracious. What happened? All right. Uh, from... Yahoo Sports? They make my bed. Yahoo. They make my trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fact check. Hold on to your ears. Disney World's shifting to free ticket model. We'll take a black at the resort for us. How are you doing? To okay. Cynthia. All right. Disney World tickets may soon be free due to Disney World's potential shift to a nonprofit status. On August 25th, 2023, the website Mousetrap News reported a breaking story of that Disney World tickets may soon oh, be free. Oh, well, soon. So Mousetrap News is this place that puts out fake news about Disney. Uh, the claim appears on the outlet website and on its TikTok channel. So it says Disney World tickets may soon be free. So may your resort stay. <laughs> <laughs> Disney was currently in the final stages of applying to become a nonprofit in the state of Florida. If they are granted nonprofit status, they will remove all costs from their park entry. Instead, the park ticket costs will be subsidized by Florida taxpayers. <laughs> Essentially, Disney would receive massive tax breaks being a nonprofit and be heavily funded by the state of Florida. Hi, Nick. Hey, Nick. So if Disney World becomes a nonprofit, its theme parks will be free to enter. It's the perfect combination of tax breaks and funding that uh, funding that allows Disney to subsidize the cost of park tickets. This could be a huge win for Disney. They know that this will drastically increase the number of visitors to their park. It's free. Why wouldn't people go? Cindy says once they came out with a good idea and I was mad because I knew it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Margie's doing the rock eyebrow raise. Can you smell? Oh, please. Also, Disney will continue to make a ton of money on each visitor from food and souvenirs. This move by Disney would primarily be funded by Florida, which is another win. As we know, Disney continues to battle Ron DeSantis in Florida. So I don't think there's any reason to continue on with this. Yeah, it's from Mousetrap News. Mousetrap News is just known for putting we, out fake fake news for Disney. Need to get one of those it's things. it's just a funny thing. What yeah, those things are going boom boom boom. Play that. You know what I'm talking about? The 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 fail trumpet. Yeah. So we'll move on. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know that when it meant free ticket model. I thought maybe it was like something. That yeah, was a cool. model. I didn't think it was something like that. All right. This next one is coming from. Oops. Is it? I don't think we want to do this one yet. No. I don't think so. No. Mm -mm. All right. This next one is coming from people. 
So it says Disney World and Make a Wish throw Royal Ball to mark World Princess Week and 150 thousandth Disney Wish. I wish I could go and do that kind of stuff. I think that would be such so, an amazing thing. Michaela, a 17 year old from okay. Palm Beach Garden, Florida, marked the 150 50 thousandth Disney Wish with a performance of Disney Classic at the ball. Disney Magic has ascended to a whole new level. As part of the Make-A-Wish program, Walt Disney World recently invited 50 Wish Kids to its inaugural Once Upon a Wish party, which proclaims Wish Kids as royalty for the day and had them meet more than 30 Disney princesses and characters, according to an official release. One special guest, Michaela, a 17-year-old girl from Palm Beach Garden, Florida, who helped the Walt Disney Company fulfill their 150,000th Disney wish by singing a melody of Disney's classic like Beauty and the Beast and Almost There from Princess and the Frog. Every little girl's girl dream of going to a royal ball, Michaela, who was diagnosed with cancer three years ago, told people ahead of the party, which was held August 25th at Disney's Contemporary Resort in Florida. As a performer, having the opportunity to sing at the ball is this has got to be a joke. Sorry, guys. What is it saying? Okay. Oh, my gosh. Uh, as a performer, having the opportunity to sing at the ball is more than I could have ever imagined, added Michaela, whose wish was to sing at a Disney park. After Ryan arriving via... Uh, I'm sorry. Via red carpet earlier in the day, guests were treated to breakfast with Frozen sisters Anna and Elsa, followed by Disney princess meetups and royal makeovers. Three generations of magical family celebrates grandma, grandma, mom, and daughter, all Imagineers. And of course, Mickey and Minnie Mouse made an appearance dressed in their majestic best. At, asked what princess is her favorite, Michaela told people... I have always identified the most with Elsa. Like her, I too have a young sister, McKenna. I am extremely close. She's my best friend. I didn't think Elsa was a princess. I thought she was a queen. I also admire Elsa's strength in being confident in who she is and wanting to protect others. The talented teen added. Leslie, Leslie Motter, president and CEO of Make-A-Wish America, told people ahead of the event for more than four, 40 years, Disney has been providing hope to wish kids and their families when they needed it most. In fact, Disneyland was part of the first wish ever granted by Make-A-Wish. She continued, it's a testament to the passion and commitment to the Make-A-Wish mission that Disney continues to find new and creative ways to deliver truly life-changing experiences for wish kids and their families. Motter also raved about the countless moments over the course of the days that will be forever remembered by the Wish Kids and their families, adding, from unexpected surprises to moments of inspiration and adventures, the Wish Kids will experience a first-of-its-kind event where everything down to the finest detail was designed for Wish Kids who love princesses. I can't wait to see the smiles on the faces of these Wish Kids who have had to endure so many challenges as they, their wish come true. She said, it will be truly life-changing for everyone involved. Michaela said that she's about to begin her senior year of high school, which she's looking forward to finishing strong. After that, I plan to go to college and hopefully see what doors and music open. She said, I am so thankful to be healthy and look forward to whatever the future holds. Aside from Michaela, other attendees at the events, including eight-year-old Lily from Middletown, Delaware, seven-year-old Scarlett from Orlando, Florida, and four-year-old Andy from Bridgewater, New Jersey, all three had Disney princess-related wishes. The Once Upon a Once Upon a Wish Party kit gives Wish kids and their families a chance to feel like a normal family again, perhaps for the first time since since the start of their medical journey. Modder says, we hope that the power and positivity of the wish service as a springboard for the families, helping them to face and overcome whatever challenge comes their way. So Mike's wants Mike's Mike wants to know how much do you think Disney spends on Plaster of Paris with all the cast members there? 
And then he asked Nick, in a week, how much do you spend on popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nick says, I used to live near Bridgewater. Oh, wow. Oh, New Jersey? Yeah. Okay. All right. I tried to do the New Jersey accent today. It didn't happen. We, we parked beside this car. I was like, look, Haley, it's from New Jersey. I don't you're know not, how to say it. You're, you're not very good at accents. <laughs> the girls are good at them. They're bad at a lot of things. <laughs> All right. We're up to uh, this is from allears.net. This is zero stars. Do not recommend these Disney restaurants. I want to know what that thing is. I don't know. But. So be warned. There are some Disney World restaurants that you might want to totally, completely, and 100% avoid. I get the waffle. I'm just not sure about what's on the left. I think it's French toast sticks. I don't know. All right. Bring your own popcorn. It's cheaper. That's <laughs> for sure. Disney World is full of incredible eats and drinks and some really unique creations creations too but that doesn't mean every spot is necessarily worth your cash we've ranked a bunch of disney world's restaurants for you but we wanted to get your input so we reached out to our fantastic all ears followers on facebook to ask what's a disney restaurant you wouldn't recommend to someone visiting the first time and they had some thoughts coral reef so i think i would try it again I've heard they changed the menu, so I don't know if you guys. I we've probably told you this story about Coral Reef. So uh, we we're not typically fish eaters. Oh, well, I love seafood. Yeah, though. but I mean, typically. So I'm the only one who eats it. So, but we were told to try the Coral Reef. My dad told me he goes, Chris, the steak is as good there as it is anywhere else. So this was back when the dining plan, you got the uh, you got the entree, or not the entree, you got the appetizer, the entree, and the dessert back when you got everything. So we go to sit down, and the lady asks, hey, Mar. And Hi, Miss Mar. And the lady asks, what would you like for an appetizer? I said, I'm not having an appetizer because I've seen the list, and I was like, there's nothing here I would try. And then the girls and Margie ordered one, and they said, well, we got an extra appetizer. What should we do? Margie, not you, brilliantly, you, not, you. no, no, says, surprise us. Surprise us. Hey, it's one way to try a new food. So, <laughs> we ordered the rest, right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, I ordered the steak and everything like that, and they bring out they brought out the appetizers. It's a big old crab call. They, it was a thing of crab calls. And they sit it down in front of me, and that smell of fish just wafted in my face. <laughs> and I pushed it away. So nobody would touch it. And the chef came out. To ask us why we weren't eating. Well, first, I and I never had it. I didn't know I was supposed to eat it or anything. And then they gave me this little fork, so I poke it, and it went. <laughs> yeah. So the chef was very upset. What is wrong with it? And like nothing, sir. We just not my thing. So it was just it was just horrible. But I do I do love but, seafood. But I have heard that that the menu there has changed. And we may have to try it again. Oh, my boombox and lunch when they got a new watch you would get on the box. So I guess. Is the pros down here? They got cons. Do they have a pro? I hope oh. you're feeling better, Mar. I didn't see. So I guess they got pros and cons for it. So okay. So I'm, I'm not going to read. So. Oh, so the coral reef, the con is. One reader mentions that while the view here is nice, there is not enough food served for the cost. Another note that they're recommended a place in World Showcase over Coral Reef, so perhaps it's also a product of Epcot just having so many other restaurants to pick from. Uh, one reader pointed out that while the restaurant can be nice, if you're seated right next to the aquarium, not all tables are right next to it. If you're seated away from it, 
they feel like the experience can be noisy and crowded. They also shared that the food was not anything to write home about in their opinion. Uh, others echoed that statement. So, in our experience, part of the meal here can and have been good. But again, when you put it up against some of the heavy hitters in Epcot, particularly the incredible restaurant and World Showcase, it doesn't tend to hold up. Plus, the meal can be long and you may not quite get the view. You're hoping for it, if not seated close to the aquarium. All right. Oh. Pros. In terms of pros, the atmosphere here is definitely unique. So if you've got an ocean lover in the group, this could be a great pick. It also has a decent amount of seafood options, which might be of interest. So, so Nick says, if you do not like seafood, do not order it. I thought, wow. <laughs> but I, see, that's the thing. Yeah. Nobody else really eats it but me. All right. And I love calamari. So here's the next thing, next one. It's a be our guest restaurant. We've, We've never, never got there. never got to eat there. So another restaurant that was mentioned a lot and might come as a surprise to you is be our guest restaurant. This spot is typically one of the most popular restaurants in Magic Kingdom and one of the hardest reservations to get. It is particularly known for its incredible theming, which will absolutely transport you into the world of the Beauty and the Beast films. So why don't why don't some all ears readers recommend it as a first time visitors. So it says the cons for some it's a service style prior to the pandemic. There was a quick service breakfast and lunch offered here. Now all meals are table service ones making them quite expensive and perhaps not as convenient to access. One specifically mentioned the cost of the meals here, encouraging first time guests to skip this spot to save their money. And there's no denying that a meal here is an investment. It'll set you back $67 per adult for lunch or dinner, $39 per child with a prefix meal. So certainly isn't cheap. Well, Mar, I will be definitely um, saying some prayers that this helps so you'll be able to hear. Oh, yeah. And it's got to be a horrible feeling. I hate it when you have water in your ears anyway, and that's that sound. One mentioned that the food was too fancy. While there are certain accessible items on the menu, there are also some things that might not quite fit your taste. So you'll want to consider that carefully. Another shared that their opinion, the food wasn't all that good. And another felt that the portion size didn't quite measure up to the cost of the meal. So let's see. The pros. On the flip side, the theming here is spectacular. It is probably one of those you have to do to try it once type of places simply because of how entice, how intricately designed it is. And you're a Beauty and the Beast fan, then this is the spot for you. All right. Moving on. Tony's Town Square. Do we have, to, we have a lot more to go through yet? I don't know. Why? It's 10 after all. I was just going to say, maybe we could just read them. But... All right. So uh, I'll just read a, a little bit off of, so off the cons list. Uh, one reader noted that while the location is ambience of the restaurant are great, the food simply hasn't been as good as they hoped. Many other readers simply noted Tony's without giving an explanation, but it was one of the restaurants most repeatedly mentioned. So I've been told that a lot of times with this, what people are talking about is if they're getting like uh anything that has to do with like uh, using tomato paste, they say it, you, it tastes like it's out of a can. Mm. And they felt like for a place like this, you should never get that taste. What do you get when you go there? Spaghetti steak. or steak? I get steak. I got the lemon noodles and mussels. Right. Uh, pros, but it's not all bad news. In fact, all your readers shared that they never had a bad meal there and that the service was excellent. So things really can depend. If you really want Italian food at Magic Kingdom, this could hit the spot, plus that garlic bread is delicious, and the restaurant has some fantastic views of Main Street, USA, particularly Porch. I don't think we ever sat on the porch. We have not. So. so is next. So I like sci-fi. I remember the girls always like going to sci-fi. Uh, Candy Mom says, I like Tony's. Mar says, she's eating a meal in Beauty and the Beast room with the huge music box. It is elegant. So Hi, Jerry. So I have heard of people going to sci-fi and saying that they didn't get seated in one of the cars, which I think that would kill. Yeah. Thank you so much for the like. Thank you. 
So uh, the cons for this one for sci-fi, dine in theater. Uh, one, all ears reader shared that the food, in their opinion, was below average here. Another echoed that saying the food was nothing special to them, despite the cool ambience. One mentioned how dark the restaurant is, making it difficult to see your food. That's certainly something to keep in mind. Uh, pros, but again, it's not all that bad. The theming at sci-fi is absolutely fantastic for many that might make a must visit at least once. It's a great place to keep kiddos entertained too, since they'll get to watch a giant screen without their meals. Next up, the Crystal Palace. Wow, I never thought I would see this one on here. Would you? Not really. All right. Some readers mentioned feeding, feeling that Crystal Palace is overpriced for the food you get here. Breakfast here is a bit cheaper at $45 per adult, $29 per child, while lunch and dinner are $59 per adult, $38 per child. That isn't quite be our guest level pricing, but it isn't cheap either, so that is something to consider. So they're complaining, saying price. All right. For a pro, but that's not to say that Crystal Palace doesn't have its fans. One All Ears reader said that they love Crystal Palace. Another also said that they loved it especially when it comes can to meal options for the kiddos. One reader said they actually always uh, recommend Crystal Palace for its character breakfast, which is a cheaper meal, but acknowledge that they are poo-loving family, so that could be an influencing thing. Let's see What's our next restaurant, Marge? You want to take a guess before we get there? Um, Mama uh, Melrose. I'll go with Ohana. You never know. I think that was it. Was it? <laughs> Oh no! Right there, Cinderella's royal table. Yeah, but the, I think oh, these are just, just quick mentions. yeah. Okay. So Cinderella, Mama Melrose is in the quick mention. Mama Melrose should have been one at the top. Ohana was one. Uh, Ohana. I wow. think maybe they should look in the mall. Yeah, Chef Mickey's Rainforest Cafe. Okay, I gotta step out for just one second. I'll okay. be right back. Sorry. So oh, I don't know. Sorry. Have you guys ever had a bad experience at a? I guess not a quick service, but at it's for table service. If so, let tell us where where it was at. Understand, we understand that some places might just have a bad time, or you have a bad server. We've ran into that too. So, I mean, we've the Tusker House. We ended ended up with a bad server and kind of just almost ruined the whole entire. And we haven't ate at Tusker House. We need to go back there and try it again. So, all right, moving on. Let's see. Never been to sci-fi. I like sci-fi. I, I know I, some people say I don't like it. I think you should at least try it once. So then again, it's probably that's probably what you should do with most of the restaurants at Disney is at least try them once. But since there's so many restaurants, you just don't have the time. Every time I hear Crystal Palace, I think of the movie, movie War Games. Really? I'd have to watch the movie War Games and understand that, Mike. It's been a long time. All right. Where was we? Okay. I think we're here. All right. Coming up next, this is from Diz Tourist Blog. Genie Plus hits new perk or per park pricing low for fall off season at Disney World. All right. So Walt Disney World has dropped per park pricing for Disney Plus to its lowest level ever, right as both the fall off season and Hurricane Idalia arrive. The post offer price trends plus our commentary about why this is happening, what to expect going forward, and where we think paying for Lightning Lane line skipping makes sense and where it's a waste of money in fall 2023. So I'm wondering if like it's dropping in price because they said that the parks have not been very busy recently. And I think they said it's been mostly because of the heat and the humidity. You might recall that a couple of months ago, Walt Disney World debuted per park pricing for the Genie Plus service. Guests are now available to select either a single park option or a multi Multiple park options, subject of availability. This is in, in addition to date-based pricing, which debuted last year and is still in effect. Uh, in effect, this has created two tiers of pricing. Park hopping, Magic Kingdom, and Disney Hollywood Studios are all usually at 
or around the same higher cost. Below that, you'll usually find Animal Kingdom and Epcot or at or around the same price. There's a bit of variability with DHS and Epcot, but usually Multipark and Magic Kingdom are the exact same price. The highest and Animal Kingdom is the cheapest. I could see that. Animal Kingdom, I think, has fewer, fewer rides. I don't know. So since per park pricing debuted in late June, we haven't had many updates since it's been relatively uneventful. Genie Plus hasn't sold out once for any park during that stretch, and prices were relatively stable for several weeks. In fact, the multi-park option was priced at $25 for two consecutive weeks before dropping a couple weekends ago and rising the following Monday. On average, July and August prices for, Gen for Genie Plus have been $25 for Magic Kingdom or Park Hopper, $22 for Disney's Hollywood Studios, $18 for Epcot, and $16 for Animal Kingdom. There was a slight spike last week that bumped those averages up by $1 to $2 across the board. Uh, August 29th, price dropped to new record lows. Multi Park at $20, Magic Kingdom at $20, Disney Hollywood Studios at $20, Epcot at $15, and Animal Kingdom at $15. So it says the pessimists out there are going to con conclude that there is entirely due to the Hurricane Idalia. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. I don't either. And the anticipation of lower crowd levels at Walt Disney World as a result. It's entirely possible that this storm is a contributing factor with today and August 30th, 2023, seeing lower lows before bouncing back a bit for the Labor Day holiday weekend. However, we've been expecting off-season pricing to hit the Genie Plus service for the last week plus and have been surprised that it hadn't happened already. Today's drop tracks with tickets, prices, and resort rates charts, as well as historical attendance trends. In short, the price decrease is not coincidental. It's the time of Hurricane Ida Leah. That's the coincidence. Since this is our first Genie Plus post in a bit, let's offer some scattered commentary and bullet. Oh, so, yeah. so I don't know. We don't use Genie Plus. So. Uh, we believe in the old-fashioned way of doing things, standing in line and waiting. So, <laughs> like the waiting line. So, uh, we we find that uh, one with the way the queues are anymore, the queues are almost part of the ride. So, if you skip the queue, you're almost skipping part of the part of the ride because mm -hmm. the queues anymore tell the tell the story leading up to the ride itself. Another thing is, is we find I that deal, yeah. I deal, Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The other thing is that we find that we make a lot of family memories when we're all together in line waiting to, uh, to get on the ride. So we also find out that uh, it's easy to irritate Margie for a certain period of time oh. when you're in line, like pinching the back of her arms oh. and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm just... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we ate in the Rose and Crown in 2012 was very good, but when in Disney in 2021, no DDP, so we're eating on a budget. 2324, DDP, let's eat good food, 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 yum, food. <laughs> did I say we eat good? Yes, you did. <laughs> all right. Up next from allears.net, two new reasons to visit Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. What do you think they are, Marge? What do you think the two new reasons are? Mm, I don't know. So Disney has recently announced two or new magic shots for the theme parks, and we can't wait to check them out. Magic shots, Marge. That's There's what it is. There's your two new reasons. I guess so. All right. To celebrate the premiere of Ahsoka on Disney+, Plus, Disney has announced the newest PhotoPass picture for Star Wars fans. Two new magic shots will be available inside both the Disneyland Resort and the Walt Disney World Resort theme park. So let's take a look. Ah. Yeah, the Loath Cat has been depicted as Sab Sabine Wren's pet in the recent Disney Plus series, and you can now pose alongside one in Galaxy's Edge in Disney's Hollywood Studios in Disneyland. If I'm right, you can pose by a Loath Cat at the creature stall that is inside a cage. 
and not have to pretend like it's beside you. No, but I would still do that. Yes. <laughs> I like that. So uh, next, Chopper is ready for his close-up in front of the Millennium Falcon. He has appeared in more recent Star Wars adaptations and shows and was recently portrayed in Ahsoka as General Hera Syndulla's droid. So there is Chopper, which now the C unit can be built in the droid depot. So you can build the same kind of uh, droid that Chopper is in the droid depot. So it says, are you missing Disney a little extra today? Great news. You don't have to be in the parks to join in on the fun. A new lens is available in the My Disney Experience app, as well as the Disneyland mobile app with the purchase of Genie Plus. The clone armory lens transforms you into a clone trooper right on your phone. So we are excited to use these on our next park visit, and we know you are too. I love Galaxy's Edge so. more. It's so pretty at night, too. Yeah. All right. Moving right along. Build for a price, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is coming from WD. Okay. This is coming from WDW News Today. Ticketless dining plan packages. Available to book for Walt Disney World 2024 vacation. So guests are now able to book ticketless packages with dining plan for Walt Disney World vacations that begin on January 9th, 2024 or later. These packages are available to book through the Walt Disney Travel Company and it's to accommodate guests who have back-to-back -back reservations at different Walt Disney World resort hotels. It allows them to book a room and dining plan without having to add tickets to the package. <laughs> so the Disney dining plan has been gone for, for three years, but will return on January 9th with some changes. There are two plans, Disney dining plan and Disney quick service dining plan. The Disney dining plan, including table service restaurant, will be $94.28 per adult or $29.69 per child. The pricing is per night. The quick service dining plan will be $57 per adult and $23.83 per child. The dining plan, everyone in the party age three and over receives the following during their pack package stay. One quick service meal per night at st of stay. One table service meal per night of stay. One snack or non-alcoholic beverage per night of stay. One resort refilling mug. For example... If you book a four-night package with a Disney dining plan, each guest, age three and up, and your party would receive four table service meals, four quick service meals, and four snacks or non-alcoholic beverages, which can be used at any time during your four-night stay. Important information, uh, beverages are included with each meal. Guests under 21 years of age may choose from a variety of non-alcoholic beverages. Guests 21 and older with valid identifications, may substitute for beer and wine and cocktails. Reservation at table service restaurants are highly recommended and are subject to availability. Guests aged 3 to 9 must order from a children's menu uh, where available, plus must be purchased for entire length of stay and for the entire, entire party. Meals are non-transferable between party members and expire at midnight on the day of checkout. Specific number of meals and snacks is determined by the number of nights, including a package stay. You can redeem your meal and snacks any day your stay until the number associated with your package has been depleted. All unused meals and snacks and the availability to use your refillable mug expire at midnight on your package reservation checkout day. Candy Mom says dining plans nice. They didn't have to worry, already paid off. I'm just kind of hoping. Maybe they'll bring back the, fr they used to have twice a year, they had the dining plan was free and for at least a week. And it was during, sometime during the beginning of the year, usually during when they're not busy. January and September is when I think it was. Yeah. So, and what, what's great about that is for during that free time, you didn't have to plan your whole vacation on that week. Just one day your vacation had to fall in that week, and then your whole vacation, you had the free dining plan. 
We have four minutes. All right. So you, are you telling me to get moving? Well, I think you better read the one. All right. Which one? Okay. I don't know. You said it was. All right. Here we go. So with our title. Yeah, I need him to do it too so I can go. Oh, Oop. this isn't really. This is. That, this isn't. Wasn't it? It's at the top, I think. Is right. it? Let me sit right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is coming from wdwnews.com. Huh. This is a new one for us, isn't it? So it says it's the first look, Journey of Water, inspired by Moana, open soon at Epcot. So it looks like it's just a video. No, Here I we go. Like, I don't pay for Netflix. <laughs> I think I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, since that was quick, I'll, we actually have something that we can throw in there as well. Speaking of food, mine just got here. Laugh out loud. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> she said, speaking of food, mine just got here. All right. So, this is uh, from www.magic.com. Marquee unveiled for Journey of Water inspired by Moana at Epcot. I like it. Yeah. So, oh, there's five photos. What's that? There's five photos. Yeah, the marquee has been uncovered at Epcot's Journey of Water, inspired by Moana, as a wide-scale cast member preview near preview near. Oh, we're glad you joined too, Mary. Mar says, "I think Steve of Steve's World can put his vlog from Moana up on Friday." Disney is yet to announce any Disney Vacation Club previews, annual pass previews, or any open dates for all guests. So, what it looks like to me for this, it looks like there's a lot of probably uh, interactive interactive stuff where probably like this, it looks like them going like that is causing the water right. to splash right. up. Mm -hmm. So it's probably some kind of sensor that is showing. And yeah, I think I'll, I think it's going to be cool. Yeah. Looks like it'll be amazing. Amazing. So I do have a question for Mary Carol. Okay. So Mary, I have a question. You say your cat's names are Adam, Blake, and Reba. I'm just curious. Adam Levine, Blake Shelton, Reba McIntyre? I'm just curious. Like, <laughs> that's what comes in my... Every time I read yeah. it, I'm like, oh, Adam Levine, Blake Shelton, and Reba McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious if I'm right. All right. We got time for one more. <clears throat> Right. This comes from allears.net. All right. The ultimate Disney challenge hits your screen in three days. What do you think it is, Marge? Mm -hmm. On the road, one of the bots said, look, another use for baking soda. It says, well, then do we have the thing for you? The All Ears team has been hard at work doing all kinds of unique things in the parks lately. Figuring out what you do not want to pay for in Epcot, competing in scavenger hunts, and even coming up with some pretty hilarious rules to follow as they complete quests. But soon you'll get to see them take a new adventure. So this is the All Ears team. Yeah. So it says, love the prices, right? Then you need to be glued to your computer or phone screen on Saturday, September 2nd at 10 a.m. Eastern. Why? Because that's when the brand new All Ears TV Price is Right inspired video will premiere. Okay, hold on. I'm writing this down. Get ready to watch some of the All Ears team particip participate in a property-wide challenge where they'll have to battle in some Price is Right inspired games about things like Disney food, merchandise, rides, shows, and more. Oh, I was right. Oh, yes. What How about the cat's names? Oh, okay. This isn't a small challenge, though, folks. It took place over three different 
Three different Disney World theme parks, a few hotels, and even a miniature golf course. We're talking some serious battling battles here. I want to watch this. So it says, according to Sage, it was the most math they've ever had to do for a video, and he may or may not have been equipped with multiple calculators to make it happen. Could you guess the price of a Disney World ticket, the cost of a room at Disney's Contemporary Resort, how much you'd have to pay for a salad from a 1970 from 1971? We'll get ready to play along from home as you watch this video. I definitely need to do this. You'll also be able to see the team participate in games that require some more physical tasks, and it all leads to the ultimate Price is Right inspired game, Showcase, Showdown, The Prize, Oh No, Big Deal, Just a Disney Cruise. Oh, I want to go. <laughs> Not really, but... <laughs> so. Be sure to mark down your calendars for this Saturday, September 2nd at 10 a.m. So you don't miss a thing. All ears don't right. So, so yes, we just promoted another channel. So, but we we use all ears.net here a lot lately for Disney updates. When I first so. started looking at all ears, they yeah. would have a ever I think it was like Sunday night. They would put up a thing and they would only show you half like a certain part of a picture, and you had to figure out where they were. Right. Like what Oh wow! Restaurant or store? Right. It was. I really enjoyed that. I would. I would take. I. I would do something like that at Disney, but mine would be of me sitting on the toilet, guessing where I am. What bathroom I'm in? <laughs> what bathroom am I? In? Tangled. <laughs> tangled. You're all tangled up in the bathroom. Craziness. And toilet paper. <laughs> Disney's one ply toilet paper. <laughs> so, but I think that's going to do it. So, one week down. Yep. Yeah. So, is there anything anything else we need to tell them? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. I said I was going to win the lottery last night because, like, once in a blue moon, and last night was the blue moon, but they did not win. <laughs> So, but we are knocking. Oh, so uh, I didn't tell you Tuesday night what tri trivia is going to be. Random trivia. It's kind of go going to go in every week thing where we'll have something themed or we'll just play random trivia. So since we just did uh, Star Wars Return of the Jedi trivia Tuesday, next Tuesday at eight o'clock Eastern time, we'll be just doing random trivia. So. But thank you for telling me I was right, Mayor Carol. I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited I got it right. <laughs> but uh, that is, I think that's going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. ready for bed. Yeah. It's early morning. So thank you guys for joining us, and I hope you all have a good evening. If Chris was in the castle in the bathroom, it would be. <laughs> 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 so once again, thank you, <laughs> and I hope you all have a good evening. We'll see you later. Good night. Bye. Bye. Hey, Marge.